Hello, everyone. We're going to get started. Get my mic here. Okay. Um, first off, thank you for everybody for coming um, to our first official group meeting. And uh, I'm going to start going over the agenda here. Okay, our meeting agenda today is uh, moving forward as a merged community of practice. So we'll talk about that, how that's going to work. Uh, AEM updates for web services. College priorities and selecting strategic initiatives. And we're also a post-meeting survey. So we'll send something out after the meeting if you could fill it out just about like the events or um, the meeting structure and just some other things that we'll talk about throughout the meeting. Uh, we'll have some questions in the survey about those items too. Okay, also um, we're looking for more committee members to help us plan these meetings and come up with ideas. If you could either um, sign up in the back, there's a, a post-it back there to sign your name if you want to join, or it will also be included in the survey to fill out there. Okay. All right, so we'll start with uh, what are we going to call ourselves? So we, uh, as a planning committee, came up with some of the... Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I will. Am I talking loud enough? Okay. Um, I'm Shannon Davis. Um, I'm the Events and Communications Manager for Undergraduate Education Events and Communications Team. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so these were some of the names that we chose that um, seemed the most popular, I guess, out of the group last, time, last meeting. Some of those who did come, we talked about uh, what our name would be, and so these were uh, the most popular, I guess, ideas. Um, so this will be in the post-meeting survey to kind of vote for what you'd like, but are there any other ideas that you want to add to that? <coughs> any other names? Or feedback in general? Yeah. Yeah. I have a thought. Okay. Uh, just that if, if for people outside of our group who don't know, um, none of those names really say actually what the group is. I mean, I, I like them. Right. Um, oh. oh, okay. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Do you want me to say it again? Okay. <laughs> um, just that the names um, themselves don't necessarily explain what the group is. Mm -hmm. I mean, except for the, the word engagement, I think, does. But um, that could mean a lot of different things. Okay. That's my comment. No, thank you. Any other thoughts, ideas? And if you, you don't, if you don't think anything now, when the survey time comes, if you want to fill in, we'll have an option for that too to voice comments or come up with names too. So, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the commitment to that time commitment? I guess. Oh, if you are part of the committee. well, um, I would say maybe every other month, maybe a planning meeting um, for an hour, hour and a half, and then the actual meeting itself to attend that. Um, maybe, a, I don't know, maybe five to ten hours outside of those meetings, sort of coming up with content, creating PowerPoints, things like, you know, some kind of, like, um, duties, I guess, that go along with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, thanks. Uh, so, going along with sort of choosing a name, um, my question is, what is our sort of primary purpose as a community right so we're gonna get to that which will be our charge oh, okay, so that's okay. sort of next on our agenda to oh. talk about and then that will also help with some of the naming too anything else okay <laughs> all right so Matthew's gonna take this from here Okay, so everybody hear me if I speak at this volume? Okay, so how many people were at the last meeting that, okay? How many people didn't attend the last meeting and just got emails and said like, okay, fine, I'll come? How many are here because your supervisor made you come? Just one, okay, good. <laughs> Three, all right, she's sitting next to you. It was very brave of you to answer, Dale. I appreciate that, thanks. So I wanted you to know that at the last meeting, we did a series of exercises that kind of solicited the ideas of, you know, these different communities to practice and what it would take to bring them together and um, kind of what we were hoping each group would be able to maintain individually. And, you know, as with um, everything in this world, you can generally solve it 
with a word cloud, right? Word clouds do that. But one of the things that, that we um, were looking at is, you know, web updates, networking, access to resources. I guess I didn't combine Dean and Deans or else that would be together. Access to the Dean or the Dean's office or those strategies were super important to us. And this idea of being able to network with one another, learn from one another, and also kind of in the, you know, in, in the guise of being um, not steered, but like understanding what the college was trying to do from, from uh, an administrative or marketing strategy level. So, and that's partially why John's here today, to speak to a little bit of that. We know we can't solve that all in one meeting, but we kind of trying to put this meeting together in a way that might exemplify some of those concerns that you had. Right, and that's supposed to be a diamond, but you know, you get what you pay for with word clouds. So we took a stab at a charge, the, the four of us, Jessica, Rachel, Shannon, and I, and kind of came up with this. I am going to read it out loud. I don't like to read slides, but I will read this one out loud. The name of this group is an LSA Dean's Office sponsored community of practice charged with providing opportunities for encouraging professional development, college-wide collaboration, and innovation among the staff engaged in raising awareness of department and unit initiatives to fulfill the mission of us, the totality of who we are. Okay? I'm going to let you just look at that for, for six or seven seconds here. Good question. I'll write that down. Does anyone want to speak to where technology might be in that? Because it's not a little indirect. Go ahead. I think that can fit into innovation. Okay. I'm sorry, what was it again? Because oh, we're sorry. streaming so that. Oh, I think that. Um, Technology and utilization could fit in under the innovation, um, including that word in it. We don't necessarily call out strictly communications in this or event planning. We didn't want to get too much into the list of all of the job responsibilities that we have because as I'm looking across the room, I see people who are wearing many, many hats. And so that list could get quite long. But like in totality, what are we trying to do with the technology? What are we trying to do with those roles? Communicate. Yeah. Communicate, drive awareness, raise awareness. So I'm just trying to, I can't look into each one of your eyes and <laughs> know exactly what you're thinking. And we wait for the microphone. <laughs> it does seem like that there should be a mention of communication in there because I, I, to me, if I didn't know what we do, I would have no idea that it has anything to do with communication in any way. Do, do our events people feel like you, mean you communicate about events? Some of you are have come from large enough um, departments <coughs> where communicating about events and planning the event itself are separate things. But for many of you, they're kind of one and the same. My question to you is, if we say web communication and event planning, does event planning need to be there as well? I do all three, and I think that sentence encapsulates all of them, raising, the raising awareness. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm, uh, we want to invite your discussion, and part of that survey that they talked about a little bit will be access to this document to comment on it or to um, add additions or to take your own stab at it. 
We would like to have this resolved shortly because I think it helps kind of in, inform the name of the group. And it's not something that I thought I should be giving the group. And the lead team definitely wanted your input. All right. So is it okay? Is it okay with everyone if we kind of close comments on this? Okay. So for the time being, let's let's sit in this with this as our charge and this as our <coughs> meeting place. I have provided um, cards for each of you. Does everyone have a card? You don't have a card at home, but you can play along if you want. Everybody have a card? All right, and I've got my stopwatch. What I'd like you to do is, this is a little bit about a, of a brainstorming session. Yeah, does anyone need extra pens? All right. And for those of you who are attending virtually, would you take a moment and, and go ahead and include your feedback in the chat, and hopefully we can grab that chat and print it out later and review that. We really appreciate you participating even um, while you're sitting in your pajamas. <laughs> So we've gone from taking three groups and thinking about one idea and kind of have proposed this idea as a sacrificial draft and want your feedback. But let's, let's live with this for a second and say, all right, what would, and I want you to brainstorm, write as many ideas as you can in 90 seconds. Want you to think of like what that meeting or what that community looks like when we get together, okay? What this, looks like when we get together in this room instead of me standing up here talking all the time what does it look like all right 90 seconds go write them all down About 20 seconds left. Okay, now take some of these ideas and share your ideas. I'll give you two minutes with someone sitting right next to you, okay? So your ideas, what's on that card, share what you can with one another Two minutes, go.
about 15 seconds. Okay. All right. Good. Now, normally, we might collect these ideas. What I'd like you to do is turn your card over. Does anybody need a second card? They were so verbose, and they just, you need a second card? And I can get you a second card. There are plenty. What I'd like you to do is I'm going to give you a minute, just one minute, one minute, to write down what would be the worst form of this group? I'm like the worst. And, and sharks with lasers, I completely understand. I get it. But okay, other than sharks with lasers, okay, that'd actually be cool. But other than sharks with lasers, what would be the worst representation of this group and what it could do for you? Go. Write it down. About 15 seconds are left. As many of them as you can. Okay, two minutes to share your worst ideas with your neighbor, please. about 45 more seconds of sharing. Time's up. All right. We're not, we're not going to go around and be able to hear every single idea, but we want to just kind of do a popcorn idea, and uh, my friends and comrades are going to record uh, some of the ideas that we come up with. Do you want to start with best or worst? Worst. 
worst. Worst. Okay. All right. I see. That's the type of group that says, let's, let's eat our vegetables, and then we can get on to cake. All right. All right. So worst ideas, just uh, raise your hand, and Jessica will come around, and, and we'll do. So eager. Um, okay. So Luna and I summed it up as the worst having a group that has no impact. So either it being, you know, a waste of time and, you know, us not getting anything out of it or not putting in enough time for it to actually have a tangible impact and achieve what we wanted to achieve. Thank you. Zero impact in case you weren't able to hear that. I think the worst could be if it just accomplishes, if the group just accomplishes things that could be accomplished via email or newsletter, just updates, I think it needs to take advantage of the fact that there's a lot of people in the room who can collaborate very actively with each other. Okay. And would you also write up there, like, opportunities to collaborate with one another? Because that was kind of the, the flip side of that, right? Um, so it would be that all three kind of separate groups that are coming together are remaining as separate groups within inside of this kind of new community of practice. And so to kind of turn that around and make it more positive, making sure that we're just um, having those three groups connect and intertwine so that we're really getting the most out, out of everything instead of remaining separate inside of this new community of practice. Thank you. We'll do two more. Uh, going off of that, making sure that while there are three groups that came together, each one has like an equal share in the meetings and it's not most about web services or most about social. That's a real challenge. It, re it really is to think about, okay, here's meeting web, web needs, but also giving you hooks into communications, marketing strategy, as well as of events. One more? Terrible idea? The most outrageous? Okay, we'll go with the terrible. Mandated policies. Okay, mandated policies. Like, you have to attend? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you heard that, right? Okay. Don't make Dale attend next time. I'll make him attend. No. All right, great. And is there one with kind of crazy? Did anybody go? There. Did anybody go shark laser? <laughs> I know one of you did. Just you. <laughs> this one. Okay. All right. We'll save that. Now let's talk about um, the ideal. This represented in the ideal. And we'll take four or five of those. So I first thing that came to my mind was the space. So I was thinking it'd be great to use one of the team-based learning spaces, such as Chemistry A859 or Wiser 110-120 as a meeting space, so that we have all of this technology to use. Okay. Technology and then the, the actual space itself is Correct. Like so you can easier to turn these chairs around and talk right. to each other? Gotcha. Right. Movable Tables, furniture. movable furniture. Great. Um, I think it'd be a good idea to report out on best practices and tips, however large or small, because you know I, you always run into people who have like knowledge that you never thought that, you're like oh that's a great idea, and you know sometimes I feel like people just kind of, you know their knowledge stays with them, you know without them knowing that other people don't know that, um, or that there's an easier way. Um, so I think that'd be a good idea, and I think having a chance to submit that beforehand so people can like look at it and maybe come with suggestions, or maybe they'll think oh that's a that makes me think of I know this, and then I'll share that. So I think having an opportunity for that would be good. Yeah. I, I read some research recently where having people brainstorm before they get to the meeting and then actually taking some of the better, I the better ideas that the group decides on and go, actually lets those people who aren't, who don't consider themselves like off the cuff fast thinkers to really engage with the problem beforehand. And so I think you know, being able to engage in between is a really good idea. Thank you. Uh, so I actually wrote down, um, that having the groups break up into smaller groups um, would be great. Um, I do think it, it sounds to me, maybe I don't really know enough about where we're headed, but it sounds to me like we're different enough that it would be useful to get um, into groups. It's like by discipline. Figure, yeah. So plan the meeting where uh, 
maybe 30 of it was all together and 30 of it was like by discipline and then all right okay thank you so I actually wrote the same exact thing as my next door neighbor here um, we said that we would really like examples and best practices of what worked for someone and then you know discussion how do I take that back to my unit or how could that work for me mm. but that's great we'll do one more uh, we had discussed clearly defined meetings so we know whether or not it's a relevant topic for us to attend or if it's something that we can skip yeah so whether or not you need to be here to engage in it or you can be one of our living room friends <coughs> or you you need to just skip and do other things okay now instead of like the most outrageous great idea you heard what do you wish that your neighbor would have shared that they shared with you but they didn't speak up and say? Mm. Just one of those, maybe. Uh, programmed and structured networking. Ooh, okay. Thank you. All right, now if you would so kindly pass your cards to the center aisle, and um, Jessica, you're actually up next, so we can have somebody else collect them. And I just want to thank you for that. I want you to know that we heard that. I would love, again, it's a pitch for this kind of this lead or core team to kind of help shape some of these things. We really like your <coughs> ideas. We do. I can tell. I was listening to the three of them talk. They, I was surprised they wanted to engage with the exercise too, but I'm glad that they did. <coughs> so thank you very much. Part of what we are going to do now, I think, is to have uh, Jessica come up and talk about there are some code releases uh, coming up, which... Um, for those of you who are not involved in web or have access to being involved in the web, maybe there are things here that you can kind of be able to ask your web person about or ways to think about your content and engage in it that way. So I want you to know that we heard what you just said. We didn't style this meeting that way, but we're trying to give you a glimpse of maybe what could be, and we still got business to take care of too, okay? So thank you. Hello everybody, I'm Jessica from Web Services. Let me put this on. Also want to take a minute to thank Chris from LCISS who's setting up our blue jeans. So that's where we're able to stream now and also record um, this meeting to post it later. So for some people who've missed it or if you guys want to kind of come back to this meeting and see it, um, we'll have that available post meeting as well. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, LCISS. Um, so we are moving forward on, there are just um, two things I kind of want to present today. One is um, typically we would present um, kind of new code changes uh, that came with the 3.1 code release that happened in September and then um, kind of give you some context as to the content freeze we requested that's um, tentatively scheduled for the 16th. Um, so with the 3.1 uh, code release, again that happened around September 20th. Um, just also wanted to point out that whenever we do a code release, um, we have two ways that we kind of can communicate that to you. One is um, our developer always does a digest of what exactly happened in the code release that was added in um, the newsletter as well. And any changes that we have, we also uh, create a news article in terms of um, all the different things that happen within that code release and sometimes other tips and tricks that we've kind of found um, are best practices as Charlotte mentioned um, we <coughs> populate that in our alt news section so here are just two different resources for you um, in case you kind of remember reading about it in one of the newsletters or code release um, you can always search it on our all news page um, on the LSA Web Services website. How many have used this as a resource? Just kind of curious. <clears throat> so some highlights from that code release. Um, filters on people's summary page, um, they honor the directory view. Um, so for some websites who don't have that gallery view, you've set your default setting to this directory view. Uh, when you select a, I 
actually there's kind of two things here. Um, so we have the filter is actually displaying on the paper summary page. And then if you go to your, study page, when you select on the field, um, it will actually honor the fact that you had defaulted to the directory view. So those are the tags? Yep, so that's utilizing tags. And um, before what was happening is it would change this view back to gallery. So that blocked picture. It's good. It looks like <laughs> that link is a unique URL too. So you could direct yeah. people from from yeah. newsletters or whatever, directly to a list of very specific faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, for sites that have um, people the self-editing form, now there's a space for um, people to uh, upload their CV. So that was a big ask um, from departments especially for faculty. So if we go and we log in, so now you have the space right here. And they can um, upload a PDF and a doc, right, a PDF and a Word doc. Um, and it will give you a, a size limit as well. We did remove that little thing where it was showing the file size, so that is gonna be gone. Has anybody noticed that CV upload? Nope. How many are like relieved that we've done that now? <laughs> uh, we also added a correct alphabetization of last name with those with special characters. Um, so those that are showing like international fonts, we had a fix previously in gallery mode, um, but when you were sorting by letters, it wasn't quite doing it correctly, so um, in multiple views, you'll get the correct sort. So this is just kind of to show that. Should have went to the right page, but. Um, so when you sort by a specific letter, now it will correctly um, sort the, the last name with the special character, um, whether it begins with the special character or if the special character is within the name. Do you have a question? Anybody have any questions? Anything so far? I'm not as entertaining as Matthew, I apologize. <laughs> um, if you have a name in your directory that needs a special character and you're seeing that it's not happening, um, you do need to make a request to LSA Web Services with our support ticket. Um, and also, if you find that the sorting is not working correctly, that's also a ticket to us. So if you kind of go back and see it's not quite working well, there is something that we do need to do in the back end specifically to your site. So that is a ticket to us, lsa.web support. I told him I was gonna do this, and you have that guy, Anata, to thank for that. He's the one that corrected that for us, so. <laughs> Yay. Um, and then just other highlights with 3.1 is uh, approved gateway search. For those that have been kind of playing with the LCA gateway, we, have a, we had a fix to improve it, and we actually have another fix that will greatly improve that search, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and then we also set the foundational code for the unit portals, which is still in its pilot phase. Um, so before I move on to kind of what's coming up next, is there any questions? Has anyone kind of seen what the code has done or the features in the code? Seven. Um, what what does that mean? Foundational code work for unit portals. Um, basically, just um, to create that directory in the um, back end to support the code for the portals. A lot of it was trying to figure out also security permissions, authoring permissions, user permissions as well. We're still kind of working on that, but just to kind of get it set on um, to support it. It's related to the search? Is that what you mean? Or no? Yeah, and in a way, yes. Yeah. So to have it, so to have the portal itself be searchable, but not searchable on Google. 
because it's a unit portal, so it should be secure. Yeah, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Can you just share a little bit about what the difference between my gateway <laughs> portal and website is? Uh, so most, well, actually everybody has a site on LSA. That's your public facing site for your department. Um, the LSA gateway is basically the college's portal that everybody has access to if you're an uh, employee of LSA or staff and faculty. Um, and then the unit portals is basically the each individual unit's own. We first used the word internet, now we're using portal. Um, so a lot of units now are kind of merging together stuff that they probably have on Google Drive and um, now I'm losing M Drive and uh, Share Drive, that's what I was trying to think of, um, into kind of one area. And the unit portal is basically using the Adobe Experience Manager platform to host that information. And then that would be, again, um, accessible to just the units, faculty, staff, grad students, undergrad students, if you so want to. Any other questions before I move on? So our next code release, I went crazy with the GIFs, so I apologize, um, is our 4.0 code release, which will in, which includes the 6.3 Adobe upgrade. Um, we have that tentatively scheduled from uh, 11, November 16th through the 22nd, so basically the week before Thanksgiving. So why so many numbers? Um, I had to keep it straight when we started working on this. Um, 4.0 is our code release. As I mentioned before, we talked about 3.1, 3.0. If you get the system update emails from me, you'll see kind of these numbers kind of going up. In it. Um, so that's our versioning scheme for the LSA project. And the LSA project is basically all the LSA AEM sites, the portals, the gateway, et cetera. Because in, um, when we worked with Adobe, we added a lot of customizations to the product for LSA. 6.3 is basically Adobe's latest platform, their uh, latest uh, software version. So by doing this, we're going to basically bring our system up to date to Adobe's current version, um, improve our system performance, and then um, this allows us to give us space to develop new features. We're actually going to transition kind of to a different user interface within the next year or so, so you'll probably start seeing information about that with us. Um, <laughs> so we have a uh, schedule that freeze for, um, for a week. So again, 11, 16 to 20 second. So you're probably wondering why the longer deployment. Typically when we say, hey, we're doing a code release, can you log off at the end of the day, wait for uh, all clear, which typically happens the next business day. Um, for this time around, it's actually a migration. So we're basically taking everything that we have currently and moving it to a new platform, um, which is the 6.3 uh, platform. So not only have our developers, not to, uh, working very hard on making sure what we have and what we've customized for the LSA sites um, kind of work with Adobe 6.3, we got new tech too. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we're getting new hardware, so new servers, new networks, kind of a, a, a restructuring of um, how we're working with, well, how we're storing assets to make it run faster. And again, this is another thing that will help with search performance um, for the gateway. Um, so in short, again, we're just refreshing a lot of, in terms of the back end, what we've done for the LSA um, sites and on our current AEM platform and making sure that it works really well with the new 6.3 upgrade. <laughs> um, as well as kind of restructuring how we're storing information for a really fast search performance on the gateway. So any questions about that? Will all this help? Oh, wait, can, if you can wait for Matthew. <coughs> Will all this help the clarity of some of the graphics and pictures? Because. Or am I just doing them the wrong? The Im image optimization. Like the how they actually look on the web. Yeah. They look beautiful before I put them there, and I put them there, <laughs> and not so beautiful. Uh, 
That should help with that, right? The image up to the side. Okay. Sorry, that was our developer, not that I'm putting it on the spot. He's never going to come to a meeting ever again. Um, <laughs> so yeah, they, they're still looking at that and um, working on that as well. So is it really important what size the picture could not the aspect ratio, but what like file size the picture is? Or like, I mean, 1,000 by 750 for a slideshow, and it says max 5 megabytes. Should it be close to that? Is like 500 kilobytes bad? Like, um, I do know we have a, a validation, so your image can't be so much right. because of how we're trying to uh, manage the storage of the assets within that. But I mean, we gave a lot of leeway within that. Um, well, I mean, right now I think it's a lot of trial and error, and um, unfortunately, images is not my strongest suit as well. Um, so, can you touch base with me after? We'll work with that. Charlotte. So, are we supposed? We, we can't be editing the website at all during that. Correct. So okay. what's basically happening at that time is we're kind of, why we're asking for the freezes, at that point that's when we're moving everything that's currently in our current servers, networks and whatnot and moving it to the new one. Um, so in a way during that time we will have both. So we just want to make sure that <laughs> the edits, if any edits happen here, we currently have no way to track them so that's why we're asking for the freeze. How will that work with um, things that we're uploading in the UM events calendar? So if we make a change to an event, will that still come in? Will it, will there be a delay like there would be normally? Right. We actually have an um, article about that. Um, so with events, um, it's a, basically with events pages, the cache holds for 24 hours. So you can kind of schedule uh, an activation to occur at a certain time in the day, and that cache will always clear. So that, and that's only going to happen on the public side, mm -hmm. um, and it's not affected by author. Um, and I can get you to the, that. There's a article I will okay. send out a link or I'll be sure to kind of circle back with so, that. But if we're making a change on the UM events on, on the campus information calendar, right. it'll cache the next day. Right. But right. we won't be able to we won't we won't be able to force the update on the site, but it will pick it up. Correct. During Correct. even during the freeze. So one thing you can do is uh, I go to um, if on November 15th you want to schedule your home page, your news events, and all news page to activate later on the next more or sorry, on November 15th you want to set your page to activate that morning, like maybe 12:05 a.m. Every day after that, it will the cache will always clear 12:05 a.m. on the public side. Uh, so that kind of brings me back to what you guys can do to prepare during this time. Um, schedule, uh, again, as I mentioned before, any other uh, um, updates or changes that you want to make, uh, make sure they're activated by November 15th. Um, and also during, actually, honestly, between now and 11, 16, you probably want to keep out eye out from communications from LSA Web Services. We are still working with Adobe and r 2 to ensure that we can do this migration and ensure it's success. Um, if, it's, if we can't ensure all that, we may have to delay to the new year. So um, you just want to be sure you're keeping an eye on communications from us. What version of, of, uh, are we using now? 6.2? 6, 6.1. 6 okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so we'll, we're going to take a five-minute break right now. So at 2.55, John is going to come up. John, from my side of the, I guess, Ann Arbor now, really. 
Anyways, he's going to come and talk about uh, marketing strategies and some of those things that should be really informative, and I'm sure some of it will even be new to me at this point. Probably not, Probably not. Oh, but it, I'm sure it'll be new to me anyway. So five minutes, two, uh, three, uh, 255, right? Restrooms are to the left, four gentlemen to the right. Okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I don't know if there are any general neutral bathrooms, but we'll see you soon. Grab cookie. Grab coffee. <laughs> Stay put. Is it okay for me to turn this one up?
How's the sound? Is that okay? Higher? Better? Okay? Not okay? I still need to project on top of this. More? All right. How's that? Check? Good? I'll try and project on top of this. I'm told that I'm soft spoken. It doesn't feel like it because the voice is loud in my head. Are all the voices loud? <laughs> all, every single, all 733 of them. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, and, and thanks for coming. I got to meet a few of you um, before this meeting and while we just uh, were getting started. My name is John Lofi, and I uh, serve the college as director for marketing and communications. Um, we are currently working, we used to work up on the fifth floor of this building. We're currently over in 101 North Main, uh, which is the Comerica Bank building across from the courthouse. Uh, the investment office, the university's investment office is over there. We're on the eighth floor. Come by and visit us, and I'll have some contact information for how you can actually do that. But we would love to see you. I would love to get to know you, and uh, I want to extend an invitation now. I'm going to do it again at the end for you to uh, come and meet me, talk to me, uh, or members of my team um, so that we can get to know each other and, and help each other out. Um, I want to start. I want to start with an exercise because you've been you've been listening a lot, um, but I want to ask you to indulge me, please, and have a conversation with somebody here. I know some of you came with people that you know. I'd like you to try and talk to someone that you don't know. Turn to that person and two things. Two things you're going to talk about. Number one, just tell them one important thing that you do. It can be the the, the totality of your job or just one part of your job that that you find personally that you find important. Now, it's the job of the listener who hears what you have to say to ask you, why is that important to you? All right? And then we're going to drill down even further, and we're going to keep on pursuing that question, why is that important to you? So what do you do that's important to you? What do you do that's important? Why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? And we're going to drill down a little bit. Um, we'll just go for maybe five minutes or so. We want to drill down into some core motivations that we all have for being here and doing the jobs that we're doing, OK? It's going to take us to an interesting place, I promise. So find somebody that you don't know at least well, and uh, let's go. So you're going to pair up. First job is tell your partner. <laughs> one person goes first. Tell your partner what it is that you do that, that you find important. And then that person's job is to ask you why.
Okay, so go ahead and finish up this, this round. Go ahead and finish up. Take, take it one more Y deeper. Why is, why is whatever you're saying important? And then switch. Okay, so each of you get a turn to do this. If you've been going back and forth, just proceed. You've got a few more minutes. I think this is a lot. About, take about one more minute and close it up. One more minute. Everybody's rolling. Okay, <clears throat> let's, let's wrap that up. Thank you. So, so quick, let's wrap up. And now all of a sudden you're talking about like the meaning of life, right? I mean, when I go down, when I go down in this, I'm like, I want my life to matter. That, that's, you know, kind of where I land on this. And so um, I want to ask, is anybody willing to share like where you might have gotten on, on one of these one of these points? Just maybe two or three people. Let's let's hear something somebody said. Anybody willing to go? Wow. <laughs> it got so quiet so fast. 
So when we were talking, we got to the point where it was pretty clear that we're not doing it for the money. <laughs> we're doing it for the satisfaction. And what do you find satisfying? Personally, I like working with intelligent, interesting, articulate people, and that's what I get out of working with my graduate students and my faculty and my staff. All right. Anybody else? I'm just going to come to you with a mic pretty soon. Let's go, Liz. Sean likes to take all the um, individual pieces of the college and help to build them into something, you know, great as a whole. Who else? So I just started here. Hi. Um, first week. But what I've come to realize and why I wanted to like accept this job and be an LSNA in the community is it really boils down to the relationships. You're building relationships with people, providing memories and experiences for the students and faculty. So I think it, that is my, the core. It's building relationships. Before you pass on, so this is your first week. Yeah. Who are you and where do you, where do you work? <laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine Orwig. Um, I work in the International Institute for CREES and CES and uh, the Copernicus Polish program is a program assistant. All right. yeah. if, you, if you work with those departments, make sure you introduce yourself to her before you leave. <laughs> okay, so... <coughs> We, you, can, you can take this exercise and you can really get rigorous about it and you can spend a lot of time digging down. It's a fun one to do with your teams on retreats if you want to do some team building. And it also can help you if you're kind of trying to find your way as a team or organization, it can help you get back to the kind of the core reasons that you're doing what you're doing. And it can help you s sort of reset when you go to, to, to try and do strategic direction. We found it pretty helpful on our team um, as, as kind of a starting point exercise. So. Um, this mic isn't working so well, that's why I'm using this one. It's not so uh, smooth, but I'm, uh, we'll, we'll make do. I want to talk a little bit about um, just our team, the marketing and communications team that is now over at 101 North Main. Because I know some of you are new, some of you haven't really had a chance to interact with us. So I just want to give you some basic information about that. And I also want to let you know some of the things that we are thinking about as we're building out our strategic plans and our strategic priorities for the next three to five years. So I want to just give you some insight into that. I'm going to keep it pretty high level for now, but I'm happy in probably a different context to drill down deeper um, and, and talk more about the details on some of this stuff. But right now, I just want to give you that overview, and then I want to make sure that we have some time so that you can shoot me questions. So what I'd like you to be doing is as you're looking at this, what are the questions that you have for us in Central? What are the burning things? Hopefully, we can get to at least a few of them today. If we can't get to all of them, we can find ways to make sure that that dialogue continues. Because above all, um, I, I want to recognize that we're all here for meeting that for, for reasons that transcend our paychecks. We wouldn't be here if all we were looking for is a paycheck. Um, and even if mostly what we're looking for is a paycheck, we've chosen the jobs that we've chosen because they recruit certain skills and abilities of ours. They recruit certain values of ours. And what we bring to the game every day matters to us and we need to um, recognize that and so that's the context in which I'm doing I'm trying to do all of the planning and talking that I'm doing recognizing that we have objectives that kind of go beyond you know just what's listed on our job description and just what's listed in the transactions that we have every day with one another okay so as I said um, feel free to contact me here's my email address here's my direct line in my office um, I'll share this back out. We're going to share the slides with you so you can get, you can get me uh, when you need me, um, and I'm happy to talk to you. My schedule gets pretty crazy, so it may take a while before I get to hang out with you, but I will, and, and I want to. So. Um, so let's talk about the advancement team. So some of our representatives are here. Matthew, uh, the social media and digital strategy. Liz Wasson, who just uh, told on Sean back there, is our natural sciences writer. Is there anybody else from the team here? What? Luna and Luna was here who also does social media. Um, so we, we work as an advancement shop. So we roll up to the dean for fundraising, uh, Tom Baird, who's the ass assistant dean for advancement, uh, who runs the fundraising office. So we've got a fundraising squad, which includes 
major gift officers, annual giving, stewardship, uh, data collection, alumni relations, uh, scholarship, stewardship, um, a, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, on the other side, operations, which includes our HR and, and other functions in the office. And then marketing and communications, which consists of uh, four main sections plus a group of project managers who keep everything on task. So we, we organize around our, our different output functions. So we've got marketing, we have communications, which uh, encompasses PR, social, and then writing, things like the magazine, which you, know, you see examples of up on the wall here. We have a video team and uh, uh, designers, graphic designers. And our project managers uh, just help to keep that flow going and help us um, make sure that we're doing the best work that we can for all of our clients across campus and donors and so on. Um, we intake something like 500 design projects a year, um, many of those for the college, some for departments and units, um, and uh, you know, produce two magazines a year. Uh, we publish an article uh, a week on the LSA Today website, which is basically the LSA homepage and news site. Um, we do PR, we're pushing uh, uh, press releases all the time, and of course, we're doing a lot of um, social media, both for the college and for the dean. Um, Andrew Martin does most of his own tw tweeting. He's a really good presence on social media. If you don't follow him, you should. He's pretty funny. Um, but we also supplement some of his work on, on Twitter. Um, and this is our ongoing sort of goal as a team, is to position LSA as the best liberal arts college in and for the country. And um, we, we don't want to just be the best that there is to the exclusion of all other schools and just kind of triumph over everyone. What we want to do, and this gives us some focus um, in the way that we communicate, is we want to talk about the things that we're doing in LSA in the classrooms, in research, in communications, um, that uh, in our culture, that can be uh, standard setting for other universities, that can be um, helpful to the world, to the state. So the things that we do here aren't just about like being great and bolstering our rankings, but that are also about actually having an impact um, in the world, um, both in our industry and, and out in the public. Okay. So our ongoing activities in support of that, um, this is just a, a very high level view. There's a lot more that we do on this, but we do a lot of storytelling. Um, that's LSA Magazine, LSA Today, the videos we produce, the podcast, the multimedia, the PR and the media relations that we do. Um, I'm in the wrong spot, clearly, for my <laughs> clicker. Um, we do crisis communications. so. When storms strike, uh, some of the DEI crises that we've had on campus, um, we have a team that responds to, to those. Um, we provide support for you guys, often in the form of um, referrals to places where you can, you can get help or help where, uh, or fostering your ability to do things on your own because unfortunately we're not able to, to partner with you and, and take on everything that um, needs to get done. And so we try to provide you the resources that you need to get your work done. And, and that's something that I think on an ongoing basis is one of the main things that I'm hoping this forum will help us with is identifying what are those places where we can be most helpful and where are the resources needs so that we can be um, facilitating you getting what you need to be successful. Um, brand identity, so things like logos, uh, colors, uh, everything from the way we articulate messages to the way that we visually represent them. Um, and uh, promotion of college-wide activities um, and, and units and events. So we support things like the Opportunity Hub, the Noonan um, Academic Advising Center, uh, Barger Leadership Institute, uh, some, of the, some of the institutes that cut across all departments, um, we, we support those. Um, sometimes just in a, for, a, for a short period to kind of stand up their identity um, and then let them go on their own, and sometimes in a, in a more ongoing basis. Any questions? Yeah. Um, can you explain a little bit the, uh, what, what the marketing component is and how it's different and where it overlaps with communications? Sure. So the, the basic message I would say about the basic distinction between marketing and communications is 
Communications is we want you to know something. Marketing is we want you to do something. Um, so marketing would be focused at prospective students, uh, prospective donors. Um, communications might be th the, the magazine, right? We're, we don't really put an ask in LSA magazine. It's really just here's what's going on in the college. We're kind of manifesting the college's values and stories. So that's the, that's the basic distinction that I would make. Did that, did that answer your question? Okay. Um, so I in the next few years, the strategic objectives that we're pushing um, in, in particular are to raise the public awareness and positive perception of the college. So as you know, we're in a, a, a political, cultural, social landscape right now where the value of any institution is being questioned, value of higher ed institutions are being questioned particularly, the value of elite public institutions and the liberal arts colleges within them and a liberal arts education in general are, are being deeply questioned. What is the value proposition for a liberal arts education in this day and age? What is the worth of a college whose job it is to question institutions uh, what is the worth of that college to our society? And that's a very hot question right now. And in many ways, it's existential for us because it has to do, because as a public institution, we depend on taxpayer funds. We depend on federal funding for grants. If that grant funding went away, we would, we would have significant problems um, as an institution. So um, fighting this fight and, and having this conversation about the value of the college and the value of the liberal arts in general is a really important thing for us to be doing. The next one is increasing awareness of the Opportunity Hub. The Opportunity Hub helps us make the case for this. It's also a really important initiative for us college-wide. It transcends all departments and ideally it's going to help all the departments and, and units make the case for the education that they're providing, that it has relevance and effectiveness and positions our students to go out in the world and succeed. We know it does. This helps us do it even better. Okay. Increasing the awareness of uh, LSA DEI uh, projects, um, and we want to particularly focus on some core uh, uh, ones that give us uh, special leverage, things like laptop loan program, things like the postdoctoral fellows, uh, things like MSI. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of projects out there that we're doing and we want to try and focus our storytelling efforts in those areas to, to um, tell the story of what we're doing and how we're succeeding, but also to be listening to the stories that are out there. Um, and finally, here we are, uh, we want to be enhancing our internal communications and that's a two-way conversation. We want to be opening up as many avenues as we can, not only from the Dean's office to say, things like what I'm saying now, here's our priorities, but also to hear from you, what are your priorities, what are your needs, um, how can we partner better together? Um, and, and that will range everything from strategic conversations to technical details like, what's the best way to send out an urgent message? Is it by email, is it by Twitter, is it by RSS? Those are conversations that we're having, um, that we're having right now too, and, and the, that will be part of our, uh, our work here together too. Um, this is all, what the work that we're doing for internal communications is part of a larger service model uh, effort um, that's being run by Advancement along with representatives from several departments. And the idea is for us to spend several years um, talking in detail about the work that the Advancement Shop does, not just communications but fundraising and all the other work that we do and how to integrate that better and, and provide better, more clear service to all the departments and units, right? So that we can really be um, most effective there. So uh, there's an advisory council, as I said, and that advisory council is meeting for the first time in December next month. Um, and so this will be folded up into those larger conversations about how advancement can be interacting best with, with you guys. Um, so I wanted to take just a sec and talk about why we pick certain stories to cover certain things like the hub or DEI projects. And, and we kind of run them through a strainer um, because we can't cover everything and, and can't do everything. So this is, this is our sort of strainer for picking, for picking projects. And it's not foolproof um, and there's a little bit more to it than this. But, but fundamentally, if we're going to be taking on a project, these are the ways that we filter it. It supports LSA's mission. 
it supports the dean's four pillars for the college. Does anybody, does everybody know what the four pillars are? Does anybody know what the four pillars are? Here they are. Academic excellence, the liberal arts for life, <laughs> diversity and access. These were articulated by uh, Dean Martin when he, pretty much when he first started. They're on, the, if you've seen those guiding principle magnets, they're the inner circle of those values and guiding principles. And these are, so, so these are the things that are the strategic points, not just for communications, but these are the strategic moves that the college is making. They want to, this is the dean and the associate deans, want to push these as the strategic priority of the college, right? So when we're communicating, messages that hit one or more of these are going to be more likely to be the kind of thing that we push. And the more of these they hit, the more likely it is that we're going to find a, that we're going to search for a good story and a good narrative to hang on that topic. Does that make sense? So something like the Opportunity Hub is about access, it's about diversity, it's about liberal arts for life, and to some extent it's about academic excellence. Most DEI initiatives are about all four of these, right? So um, those, those things rise to the top when they, when they hit more and more of these pillars. Okay, I'm gonna go back now. So, it supports the LSA mission. It supports those four pillars. It supports the LSA advancement mission, right, which is to position the college uh, as best it can. It supports um, uh, our objectives and strategies, those, you know, those things that we're doing um, over the course of the, the next few years. It embodies our, our core values and the LSA um, guiding principles. Um, so this is sort of a backstop on things like, oh yeah, that's a great idea, but actually that's not collaborative, or that doesn't show that doesn't demonstrate integrity, right? It, it, it's a check on um, making sure that we're actually living the values that we say we are. And then sometimes priorities of college and university leaders come in and say, you know what, actually this is just super important because X. And so sometimes some of those projects just get raised up. Um, usually those have very clear connection to all of the rest of this. Eh, sometimes they don't. This is why we get paid. So um, I, I know I'm kind of racing through a lot of stuff. I'm happy to go back. We got about five minutes or so before we wrap, but I'm happy to kind of keep this conversation going. I might, I don't know if I'm gonna steal your agenda, but I might offer that at one point if you guys are interested, we could come back and have a, a sort of Q&A session where I just sit and you throw all the questions out to me so that I'm not just talking to you. But I thought it was important for me to at least give you some insight and transparency into what we're thinking and why we're thinking it. Okay, so uh, any, any questions? We got, a, we got a little bit of time. So any questions about what this, what I've talked about? Or objections or suggestions? When it comes to the marketing aspect, um, specifically when it comes to targeting new students, mm -hmm. um, what method of marketing is most effective from LSA's standpoint? Is it print? Is it the web? Is it the email marketing? Mm -hmm. Which one is most effective? Uh, good question. Um, it depends on the student um, and it depends on their situation. So what we generally do, and I actually defer to um, the student recruitment team for this, but what we generally do is we'll send a lot of um, electronic uh, signal to the students. That's where they tend to live. But we also know that they get just monster piles of recruitment emails. And so we'll also send the print things as a complementary um, element. And one of the things that the recruitment folks have found, at least in my understanding, is that um, Print pieces are also for the parents. <laughs> um, so so the, the electronic communications hit the, hit the students pretty well. Social media hits the students pretty well. But the print pieces are the ones where you, you really want to try and make a statement. And it's sitting there, out there on the dining room table and maybe a parent opens it or maybe they see it. And it just kind of, it, it's that extra little nudge. There's a couple of scholarship programs that we're really um, trying, to, trying to recruit pretty hard on. And um, we've got a really integrated system of um, print pieces and, uh, and, and social and email. 
And on the print pieces, for the ones that are really high priority, we're actually like including hats and tchotchkes and stuff like that, so that it's not even an envelope. It's like a big, you know, it's a box or something like that. Yeah, so it, it, you really, I, I don't know if any of you have college age or high, high school age kids, I do, and, and the amount of just crap they get is, is spectacular, and to stand out in that crowd is hard. Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting and helpful because, you know, being in a unit, we don't get a lot of this sort of big picture information. Um, and it would be great to, I mean, you sort of um, mentioned this, but to have sort of specific ways that communicators and units can also be figuring out what to prior, prioritize and, and how to use this information in our daily jobs. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, it's a, it's a great point. And as you, as you look at the kind of strategic priorities that we've got, so knowing that, I'm hoping that by you knowing that things like the hub, you know, so internship stories, mentorship stories, you know, stories of students going on and having a, a really interesting career after having, a, you know, an unexpected major to take them there. Um, if you know that we're prioritizing that kind of story, then that helps you pitch to us and it helps us help you pitch. Right, that that that's where we're going to want to invest our effort. The DEI stories that we want to push. You know, like if you have those narratives on which we can hang these messages, that that is where we can have a lot of fruitful collaboration. Right. It may not, you know, it may not be that it appears in the magazine, but um, there's all kinds of ways that we can talk about how to how to push those stories out. Yeah. So if we have an idea like that, what's the first point of contact? We do. Oh. There it is. So Ellis, so you can contact me. Best way to like start just asking us questions or pitching stories or just saying, hey, what do we do? Like I've got this kind of cool thing. What should I do? Um, LSA marketing goes to a bunch of us, and you'll get an answer. It may not be right away, but you'll get an answer within 24 hours, and, and we'll it'll give us a chance to kind of think about it strategically and figure something out for you. Um, Okay, so I, I think we're out of time. I wanted to show you one other thing. This I'll send this out, and I will send out some documents when we when we push this back out to everybody. Um, some of the things that you should know um, are about crisis communications, talking points about freedom of speech. So as you know, Richard Spencer has applied to come here. Um, University is still trying to decide what to do about that, right? Um, and and that's a complicated issue. Um, and uh, so, so the university has responses. LSA has its own policies and responses. There are things you should know about what to say or not to say in an emergency situation or in a very hot political situation. Pretty much what you should say is whatever LSA said and whatever LSA is going to say is whatever the university said. We're just going to try and cascade messages out so that we don't have this kind of chaotic popcorn of messages going everywhere. So we're trying to consolidate all that. And we'll talk about that in more detail um, at a future session. Um, we also have freelance writers and designers, and we can share that list with you guys. Um, so, so we'll share out these resources with you as well. But um, above all, just contact us here. This is the easy route. Okay, Thanks, everybody. Is this one still on? Okay, I just wanted to say a couple of things before people leave um, to let you know. We are going to be sending out um, a survey, sort of uh, going back to some of the things Shannon talked about, the, the name of the group, um, that charge that we're working on finalizing. Um, that'll all be updated on the gateway once we, you know, once we all sort of agree to something. Um, we'll also be sending out the slides and a link to the video that, um, that we've recorded today. Um, and we're working on sort of a social space. So right now we've got some Google Plus groups. Um, we're thinking about you know how to bring those together, and also then a collective email group to make sure that you know everyone who is interested in this, who came today or 
who is just doing this work um, is able to uh, have access to the same resources. So um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to contact any of the, the leads here individually. And also, if you're interested in joining um, the, the collaborative lead team, please go ahead and put your name up there or um, send us an email. Thanks, everybody.